can you talk to me about uh, how much life has changed? I mean, take us back to maybe a year ago, and what's the biggest difference from a year ago to what it is today? Um, man, uh, around a year ago, maybe a little bit over a year ago, I was, which house was I in? I don't know if I was still in the, uh, the apartment with no gas or if I was in the, uh, the house that was, looked like it was from Hoarders I found on Craigslist. And then um, I had a car that had only one window working and no air conditioner working. And I almost had no time for laundry. I would just take all my stuff and dump it in the back. So I'm pretty sure I had an ecosystem in my car as well. And, um, uh, but fortunately, I wasn't working the three jobs at that point. I was able to quit um, those jobs a few months before that so I could train full time. But yeah, it was still, it was a little rough for a while. But I kept thinking at the time that I'm like, this is all temporary. It's just the beginning of a really interesting autobiography. So uh, it's starting to work out like that. All we need to do now is write a book. I think the biggest difference is probably my living situation. I got a, a house in the location that I always dreamed of and would always like to live in, which is pretty much a few blocks from where I grew up. And, um, and I got a really, really cool car. <laughs> and I have a, a big enough place where I can like um, bring in all of my best friends, like the people that have really supported me and been good to me all along, and I could be a, like a really valuable resource to them and help them out in whatever they're doing. So um, the best thing is I get to like pay it forward a lot now. Man, that's awesome. All right, can you take us back to UFC 157? How's your neck and jaw doing, by the way? Good. My neck is fine. Um, I'm yawning a lot better now, but at first I was like, anytime I had to yawn, I was like, oh god, no, it's coming! Like, uh, but now I'm much more, I'm much more healed from it. I mean, when, when I told people, I was like, like, I wasn't worried about the 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 face crank, is because it's it's a pain move. It's not really something I'd worry about, you know, being unable to compete anymore for. It's not like I was going to go unconscious or anything, but uh, it was extremely painful. So, um, you know, I'm a little bit sore, but it's nothing permanent or long term. It's just it's part of it, it's part of the game. I, I was one of the many people that was shocked that you did not tap from that neck ring. How close were you to tapping? I wasn't close to tapping at all. It's a pain move. Pain is something that you choose whether or not to acknowledge. And I was just making all the decisions um, according to what was going on at the moment. I'm never going to give up a match because something is painful. I'll, I'll give up a match because I'm either unconscious or something like some sort of limb has fallen off. And that, probably not at that point either. I'd probably grab it and try to put it back on and go back in there. So it'd have to be unconscious or referee stoppage, and neither of which were in danger of happening at that moment. All right, very cool. All right, so let's talk about a next potential fight. It's the only fight people can talk about, obviously. Cyborg Santos. Um, listen, she, she's basically come out and made it very public. She cannot drop down to 135. First of all, do you buy that? Uh, no, not at all. If your pump full of steroids and the lightest you can get is 145, then if you're clean, it's, it's assumed that you could get lighter. And she hasn't had a recorded win in like over three years. And she's the one that should be trying to make all of the changes to try and clear her name instead of walking around and saying that everyone should make all kinds of exceptions for her and create divisions and catch weights just for her. I don't know where this sense of entitlement comes from. There's a lot of really accomplished and honorable uh, women fighters that deserve title shots ahead of her. I mean, Sarah McMahon won a silver medal in the Olympics in wrestling and is undefeated at this point. That's the kind of girl that deserves a title shot ahead of some fraud. And if Cyborg doesn't want to make the weight and they want to really over-negotiate the contract and ask for too much money and ask to be released from the UFC, we're not going to go chase them down. We don't need them. She needs me. I don't need her. So if she wants to come around and actually do something sensible for once, she'll come to the only division that exists and fight for the only title that matters. If not, then whatever. I'll fight other people and she could just fade into obscurity. Um, when you talk about not wanting to move up to 145 to meet her and fight there, or even moving up at all to 140, uh, how much of that is predicated on the fact that, again, she did fail that drug test, and is there worry there that, you know, uh, if she's going to be up at 145, uh, are you worried about, you know, is that failed drug test lurking in the back of your mind? Um, no, I don't care about the drugs. She, if she makes 135, I don't care if she's injecting horse semen into her eyeballs. It, it's just as much of a detriment as a help for her to take steroids and, and make a division like that. So that's 
And it's the only division that there is. I'm not making any kind of exceptions for her. And she has a very long history of coming into fights grossly overweight, like seven pounds overweight. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we agreed to a catch weight of 140 that she would show up at 45 anyway and just be like, whatever, fight me anyway. That's the kind of thing. She has a record of doing this repeatedly in the past. She has a very obvious disrespect for her opponents because she's cheating and coming in overweight repeatedly. And so, no, I'm not going to make any exceptions for her. There's one division. You can come fight for the title or not. Is there any kind of situation that you could see where Dana White comes to you and says, listen, Rhonda, you got to fight Cyborg, and it's got to be at 140. Could you ever see that kind of situation happening? If Dana asked me to do it, I would do it. But Dana's a sensible guy, and I don't think that um, he wants to encourage the kind of behavior that she's been displaying. Oh, that's interesting. So you think it's not so much the weight, but it's more the money? They, they, they're willing to make 135, but they're, they're asking for an exorbitant amount of money, and they're trying to over-negotiate their contract. And if you try that with Dana too much, he's going to get pissed off, say, screw you, and we're going to do it without you. And that's pretty much what's been going on, to my knowledge.